security for a fall. I have a 70, 70 male. 75 year old guy fell. Possible rib fracture, I guess. I'm guessing this is it. Hey, sweetheart, what's going on? Yes. 1942. Hello. I look good, huh? Ooh, yeah. Goodness right. gracious. I look like huh? Yeah. He's got a huge swollen eye, and it's bruised and bleeding, and he has a laceration to it. So, I mean, he hit something hard. The guy was, was not young by any stretch. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into what we're concerned about for him. One is if he's on blood thinners, you know, how much is he bleeding and how much is he bleeding inside? Um, and what possible fractures could he have? He could be having fractures in his, his skull, and around his eyes, face. So, I mean, he's, he needs to be going to the hospital. Man, I'm Dude, you see that big old knot you got on your head? And then you got up and came home? I know young cats, man. They get a little cut and they want to call the ambulance. And look, you waited all the way to the end. Oh, life ain't nothing but a party that you die. Can you put your hands down by your side for just a second? Yeah, sure. All right, I want to look at your chest when you breathe. Oh, I always break my ribs. Oh, you broke them before? Yeah, I'll put you down. Old, Take some deep breaths the best you can. Yeah. <gasps> when you have broken ribs, you have those jagged edges of ribs that can, you know, cut all your organs. It can, it can rip a lung. It can rip like a main artery. I mean, it's going up and down and like that. It, it's like razors. It can be cutting anything. He's got the Elvis Presley haircut, yeah. Who, <laughs> this guy right here? Yeah, he got them long side birds. I ain't nothing but a hound dog, man. Hey, look. I don't blame you. There ain't nothing wrong with being a hound dog. Look, I'm going to give you a little oxygen. It's going to kind of help a little bit with the pain. Fumilachi, man. Fumilachi. You know what that is? No, what that is? That's a uh, weed. That's what I call weed. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have none of that on the truck. Damn, man. We're going to start a little IV over here. Big stick in your arm, one, two, three. I'm sorry to be so stupid, man. No, you ain't stupid at all, man. You my favorite patient of the night. The guy was funny, man. He, for, uh, for being seven years old, he was, he was a cool guy. Like, he was a guy I could see myself hanging out with. It's my favorite saying is this. Life ain't nothing but a party to get high. You know what? I believe wholeheartedly that you have lived by that. Ah, it is. <laughs> 30, 20. It's going to be 69-year-old male. It's going to fall hit his head. 10-4, no MVP. 69-year-old man fell hit his head. You know, fall is the leading cause of trauma for elderly. You know that. I do now. You're right. See that? You can learn something from any pocket. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? What's going on? My dad. 69, soon to be 70 on Friday. All right. Is he is he, he conscious? Fell. Is he talking? Is he alert? He is alert. Right. My dad's very stubborn. So fell. he ain't gonna want to go. But this right. is not the the first time this has happened. All right. And my mom, they just celebrated 45 years of marriage. That's awesome. And his birthday is Friday. Oh, and we're, hey. wait. While y'all are here, he doesn't know this, but we have a surprise party for him Friday, so I need the man to live. All right, that's uh, <laughs> All right, so that's all I got to do is make sure he lives. That's pretty easy. I'm going to do the full treatment on him. nothing wrong with him. Here's what I want to do. I want to know what you remember and what happened. I tripped, and I couldn't catch myself, and I went, I took a header all the way to the door. OK. I hit my head. On, on the door? Yeah, on the okay. door. And, um, did you lose consciousness? No. If you pass out and fall, then that could mean that you had a cardiac issue or as a result of precursors to a stroke. If you trip and fall, that's fine. We all trip. Were you uh, able to get yourself up off the floor? I could have if they wouldn't have been bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You got a lot of people here that care about you, so they just want to make sure. We're just going to check your blood pressure and stuff like that, if that's all right with you. I'm cool. And we'll just we'll, we'll get out your hair. He knows what happened. He didn't want us there. I think us being there embarrassed him more than anything. He's hard-headed. We all hard-headed. All right, man, your heart looks good. I checked his blood pressure. I checked his sugar. 22-year-old man right there for us, all his vitals. I'll tell him that, because he'll never go to the hospital. <laughs> right. I have to kill him to get him out of here. Everything looks pretty good. Am I well, am I well enough to run away from home? <laughs> 
can't run from just, your wife. We just celebrated 45 years of marriage. Whoa, congratulations. 45 is that... years, I feel, I, I'm about to celebrate 10. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like I made it. Like, I'm, so, I'm somebody after 10. Get out, get out, get out. So. Get out before it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Y'all all right. I love running calls with people that are just happy that we're there and respectful, and it's like going to take care of my family. You call us if you need us, OK? I think that's the first time I ever seen my dad cry when he lost, yeah, when he lost all his in that storm. Yeah. Dude, my dad broke down, too, in a hotel room. It was like. I mean, it's big, strong, man. I imagine your dad was a lot like mine. Like, that's just something that you don't see. So a call comes out for an elderly lady with leg pain and leg swelling at uh, assisted living that we pick up patients at pretty commonly because uh, there's a large elderly population that lives there. All right, baby. 31. I'm going to take care of it. Don't even sweat it. Do you have any chest pains, anything? Only thing is have. All right, what I'm going to do is we're going to do, I'm going to check your heart. I'm going to give you the whole thing. She is an amputee. She has lost her legs, and she's having, like, some swelling and pain. All right, look, I'm going to take a picture of your heart. How old are you, 24, 25? Nah, two. Nah, two. When she says she has chest pain, that kind of goes along with the leg swelling. So this could be an issue of, of all the fluid backing up into her heart. You was here for, for the storm? What you oh, you were with your children before Did the you? storm? Oh, you was in the oh, Superdome? Okay. So what we doing for this anniversary? Just something that you don't want to think about, or? Didn't you just stop showing that? I know. I see. That's <laughs> I know. what I say. I know it's kind of depressing it. a little bit. Uh, I Brings feel up you a like lot of that. bad memories. I always tell people when they ask me about what I used to say. I say I want you to just go home and just throw everything you have away. Right. Like see everything, how you feel everything. About and just see and let me know how you feel. Diplomas, right. all that stuff. Were you an amputee for Katrina, baby? After. After. Amelia Street. And it did want to hear. So you had to walk to the water and that filled the water and then got to, so you had to amputate it. All right. Now you about to make me feel a certain type of way right now. You and I'm bring my, my work home. Yes, man. Who's little man? Come on. That's your grandma? Come on in. Love you. <laughs> That's all like my mom. Thank you. No problem, no, thank you. And look, we're going to run up the baptist, all right, Mom? All right, all right, no problem. I think a lot of people have scars from Katrina, be it physical, emotional, mental. This lady gets up every day and is reminded of that day every time she looks where her legs used to be. Like, I just, I, it's just amazing that she lives with that. I'm going to North Robertson for a medical alarm. For somebody with a power off, now the home oxygen not working right. We coming here, sweetie? Yeah. So what's going on? I got oxygen here, uh -huh. over here, and I can't get it. It went off. OK. And I can't stay without my oxygen. This no is reason. the room that ain't got no lights up in it. OK. Oh, yeah, look, there's power in the kitchen. I know. Where's the breaker box at? I don't know if to go to the hospital or what to do. Well, you don't need to go to the hospital. Well, you don't need to go to the hospital, baby. Oh, you frying chicken up here and everything. <sighs> you know where the breaker box is, baby? Outside. Outside. What about the one that's on the inside? There ain't none on the inside. There ain't none? You sure? Where's that on the outside? He's going to go look at it for you. Being a medic, sometimes it just it's not necessarily always medical. Sometimes it's about being an electrician. Sometimes it's about being a mover. One of these is the one high, one is high. Well, that's one easy way to find out. Did they turn off in the back? Nick, turn it back on so I can take this food okay. off. Okay. All right. She is going to burn the house down. Crazy. There's chicken. You making chicken back there? I'm taking it off the stove. It's about to burn. <laughs> Uh, there's got to be a breaker box in here somewhere, but I just don't know where it is. The landlord's coming or what? Uh, yeah, she just talked to him. Miss Elsia, I took your chicken off the stove, all right, and put it on a plate. It was about to burn, boo. It was about to burn. All right, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You'll be able to walk into the kitchen, finish your cooking, 
I got your tube right there for you. There you go. Now you can finish cooking and all. Bet you didn't know I was an electrician, did you? I did not know you were an electrician. I'm glad. I, but did you know that I am good at removing chicken from hot grease? I saw that. She's going to eat that fried chicken, and she's going to be the best she's ever had. Now she's going to start calling 911 for you to cook her fried chicken for her. I'm here for you. I got you. <laughs> there is never a time we won't come for you. No. Be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're going to bleed to death. <laughs> Grab the knife. Grab the knife. Oh, they're not dead. I can work with that.